Welcome back to Dominant Mets Nation. Well, it's uh, the second day that the Mets, they have gotten rained out. But the good thing is the Mets have rained out the game early. We don't have to go through the rigmarole and the nonsense that they pulled last night about making the fans sit in the rain for two straight hours. Unbelievable. When you can't do things right, it just steamrolls and it just goes into other areas and having trouble putting a good product on the field and they're having trouble doing things right off the field as well. So that was kind of pathetic last night, what they did with the fans. Disrespectful in some sort of way. I, I, I really believe that. I mean, those fans, the ones that came out to your own four team that cared so much to come out in the rain. What, what can I say? What can I say? Uh, when you're not doing things right, you're not doing things right. Okay, so let's get into today's Mets news. And before that, um, if you could smash that like button, join the channel. Hit the subscribe button. That's your best way to show the, your appreciation. Um, if you enjoy uh, what I'm doing, I appreciate that. And if you don't enjoy it, hey, I apologize. There's a lot of YouTube channels out there. Okay, all right, so let's get into it. Today, we have about we, we have three topics. One, I want to talk about Steve Cohen. Um, he has a response. He went on um, a short little interview, and he responded to the Mets 0-4 start. So I want to comment on that. Uh, number two, I also want to comment on this Reese Hoskins, Jeff McNeil thing, because it's a lot bigger than that just one play. It's a lot bigger than that. And number three, we're going to talk about the Mets newish Newest pitching acquisition. So we'll get into that. Okay. So first, let's get into the Steve Cohen interview. And he was asked in the interview, how do you feel? The Mets, we started off 0-4. And, and his basic response, which you know I could have anticipated, was to kind of really downplay it. Hey, it's only four games. It's really, really short period of time. He uh, made an analogy for to his hedge fund company, that, oh, it's a very small part of the first quarter, just really intimating that things will turn around and that even good teams go through four-game losing streaks. We just happen to go through it in the beginning first four games, which, yes, that's true, that's right, but my problem with this whole four-game losing streak is how we're losing. Like I keep saying to all our good members, it looks like the Mets are going through the motions like they're in August. Like they just went through four months of a hard season. There's no fire. There's no energy. There's no passion. Where is the excitement? We This is opening day weekend. This is opening day week. You figure these guys want to get off to a great start after last year. And it seems like it's more or less a continuation of last year. So that's my really biggest beef with how we open it up. Yes, of course you could turn it around. But have a little fight. Have a little fight. Okay. All right. So then they went on and they continued to ask, you know, Steve Cohen about, you know, his philosophy in baseball and, you know, what what he needs to do. You know, he, he said that he's a guy that if he doesn't see, see things going in the right direction, he will cut his losses a la last year. Thus, if anything needs to be changed, he's a guy who is going to be a quick decision maker. At the end of the day... He said he doesn't care if he loses money, which it was responded, well, you're in this to make a profit. And he's like, oh, yeah, I bought the team to make a profit. But I also bought the team because I want the fans. I want millions and millions of people to be happy with the product. He more or less, and this is what I was a bit surprised, he goes, I take it as a civic responsibility to positively affect all the Mets fans and the community, which it kind of tells me that, and then he, he answered this in his next question, he's really in this for the long term. He says that you can't buy players. We tried that the last couple of years. When you buy players in free agency, you're often paying for their younger years, and then obviously they're going to age. So you're not going to get the production you're ultimately paying for. He says the best way, and this is what 
he brought David Stearns here is to build up the farm to get the players when they're going through their earlier years, their most dynamic years. That's what we need to do. Develop the farm system so we, you can, we can ultimately win that World Series and sustain success. That's what Steve Cohen said in his interview. So I guess more or less he's really downplaying the 0-4 start because he's saying that it's about the big picture. This is a small, small, small snippet, um, and he's saying it doesn't really have anything to do with the big picture. But I, I everything right now, I believe, has something to do with the future. So what, what, is, what do we mean right now? So are you telling me that if it continues to go the way it goes, I, I believe these players right now, I believe a huge change has to happen because I'm seeing a continuation of more of the same. More of the same, right? Um, like I've mentioned this in past videos, Lindor is already a guy who's got his his bag, his money. He's set. McNeil got his, he got paid $50 million. He's set. Marte is an aging guy who's injury prone. Okay, he's he's somebody I'm not going to rely on. Pete Alonso's, you know, by not giving him the contract, he's got one foot out the door. So how much of a help is he in that clubhouse with the young guys galvanizing the bunch? I think we have a very fractured right now and that's not good in getting the uh, exterior parts together like you don't have a you don't have a together core everybody's fractured everybody's worried about themselves there's no team focus there's no team goal and you have a rookie manager who's responsible for putting this together hence is why I, I was a guy who wanted to stick with Buck but at the end of the day Steve Cohen is saying we are analyzing a very very tiny tiny part of the season and he's still on message saying he feels things are going to get better okay i expect steve cohen to say this he's invested a lot of money and a lot of resources in this plan so you're going to stick to it i get it i get it okay number two and it's kind of related to number one number two topic everybody um i appreciate all the messages and the feedback continue to drop your comment on this situation um, there, there are a couple fans who don't want to hear this. It's basically the same thing over and over, but you have to understand until the Mets change the narrative, the topics or, or the conversation is going to be similar because that's what we have in front of us. We have to go with the Mets present and the Mets haven't presented a great product thus far. Okay. That being said, the Reese Hoskins, Jeff McNeil slide. I think was indicative of a bigger problem, a bigger problem. Now, Reese Hoskins responded by saying, you know, he's playing the game and he's playing it the right way. He's playing hard. I'm a guy who looks at this situation. I'm like, you know what? We could use a little bit of a Reese Hoskins on this team. We can use that fight. We can use that, you know, you know, uh, gamer, that gamer. That everybody's been saying, oh, we need gamers. We need guys like Reese Hoskins. Hoskins, we need that attitude, that approach, that win at all costs, right? Okay, now your response could be, well, we don't want this guy hurting our players, right? Yes, of course not. But I looked at the slide probably more times than was was normal. Probably looked at it like 50 times since it happened. And uh, John Boy Media put out a good um very slow down motion of it. And it, he went by work, you know, he obviously gave the verbiage, to, you know, they were jouncing back and forth. And Jeff McNeil basically said, this guy's a dirty guy. We have videos of this guy doing this over and over and over and over. Okay. Right. So keep that in mind. So you have Reese Hoskins on first base. You know, he's a dirty player. Jeff McNeil at second base when he was turning or, you know, attempting to catch the ball, didn't move his, I think it was his left leg, and out. He didn't move. Now, you know a guy who you, you know, appear to be as dirty, you don't move your leg at all. Every second baseman, when they're turning, they always move a bit, you know, because no play is just take this slide and stop immediately at second base. I would say 50 or 60% of all players, all slides, especially in that situation, go a little past second base. Now, Reese Hoskins did slide late, 
But with the knowledge of you knowing Reese Hoskins has a propensity to do this to your team, specifically, you're saying you have the data. You're saying he does this. I have to say, I have to put the onus and the responsibility on Jeff. Jeff, move your leg. You know the guy's going to do it. Move your leg. It's almost like this guy's setting himself up to be upset, to complain, to complain. The umps reviewed it. They looked at it. They considered it legal. Okay, move on. Move on. That should have been a moment in time where the team was galvanized and fought for each other. But I guarantee there were a lot of players on the team that said, Jeff, you could have moved. Jeff, you could have pivoted. You could have done other things, you know. And then, you know, you see Reese Hoskins going like this, cry baby. Yeah, that's the perception we have on our team. And I hate that perception. I don't want to be known as cry babies. I want our team to be known as a team that fights, a team that will, you know, instill, you know, kind of like, I don't want to say fear, but I want, a, a, you know, a, a team that is respected, that is respectable, you know, Jeff McNeil being known as a crybaby, that's honestly how he comes off. I'm not, you know, and I'm a, I'm a Mets fan. I'm a Mets fan. I've watched Jeff McNeil since he came up. I was happy in the 2019 when he was fabulous that year. The balls, balls were juiced. But, you know, Jeff McNeil is a guy who, you know, he should be a leader. He should be a guy sending good messages to the, uh, the younger guys. And, and I feel... It's all about culture, and we've had a lot of uh, members who reiterated the same thing. I thank you for your feedback. It is about our culture. Until that culture changes, maybe we flip out, flip around a couple of players, and it, it doesn't have to be a whole slew, but two or three, I guarantee you, one, two or three guys are impacting this whole team. We got to make a change, and we got to do it quick. I don't care. Oh, and two, oh, and three, oh, and four. It's only four. It's only five. It's any one game. To me, if you play in the wrong way, a game supposed to be played is unacceptable. Four games is really unacceptable. In the in the um, if you put it in perspective, the entire season, yeah, okay, whatever. Let's move past that. Let us put a, a best put foot forward going through. Um, go to the next thing. Okay. Um, and a third topic is the Mets have brought in additional pitching help. With the injuries to Tyler McGill, obviously Kodai Sanga is still on the injury block. We needed more pitching talent. We needed another guy who could eat up innings. And that's why we signed Julio Tehran, according to Mr. Andy Martino. I think it was like an uh, incentivized contract. Um, you know, we didn't give him too much money. But he was a guy that we went after in spring training. He opted to sign with the Orioles. They gave him uh, some type of signing bonus that was more than what we offered. So he signed with the Orioles. Orioles kind of cut him. He didn't make the team, right? Perfect guy for the Mets. Perfect guy for the Mets to kind of scoop up. So Tehran opted out of his contract with the Orioles. Thus, he signed with the New York Mets, who were interested um, in the guy last month. Now, what does Julio Tehran present to the Mets? Uh, Tehran, you know, I, I got to say, throughout his career with the Braves, he was pretty decent. He, he was never lights out, but he was always a very solid pitcher, you know, pitching around, uh, you know, 180, 190 innings, 200. He pitched 221 innings in 2014. Uh, he made the All-Star game twice. He's a two-time All-Star. But as of late in the last, um, I'm looking at the stats right now, since 2020, he's appeared in 11 uh, 25 games. Since 2020, he's appeared in 25 games. Last year specifically, he appeared in 14 games. He was 3-5. and five. He had a 4.4 earner in average. He struck out 6.3 per uh, hitters per nine innings. His whip was 1.13. That's not that bad. Um, earned runs, he gave up 35 earned runs in 71 innings pitched. So he pitched 71 innings. So that's, I think, what you're kind of looking for. A guy who can just eat up a few innings. A few innings until our guys get healthy. Kodai Senga, um, Tyler McGill. Until you can bridge the gap to when our young guys are ready. We need a little more seasoning for the young guys. Now, what type of repertoire does Julio Tehran have at this stage in his career? He's 33 years old. So right now, with a 
according to last year, he has an, an average fastball of 90 miles per hour. So he's not a guy who, you know, who, who throws in the mid to upper 90s. He throws an average 90 mile per hour fastball. He throws that most uh, last year 48% of the time. Then he has a cutter, 86 mile per hour cutter, an 83 mile per hour changeup, and a 77 mile per hour curve. Okay. So this, you know, this type of repertoire doesn't blow you away, but you know, everybody thinking that this is going to be a move that like, oh, you know, we signed Julio Tehran, hopefully he resorts back to the Atlanta version. No, that's not the case. We just got uh, you know, more or less a scrap heap pitcher, a guy to eat up innings. That's all it is. An extra body, a guy to eat up innings. If he does if he has a couple productive outings, that's great. That's great. I'm not expecting anything great from this guy. Um, you know, there's a reason why he was cut by the Orioles. There's a reason why he was still on the scrap heap right now, um, especially when pitching is so desired. He's just a very kind of low risk, um, low reward type of player. All right. So that's what we got We for Mets news today. Uh, hopefully we're going to have a, a start tomorrow when the Mets have a doubleheader. This is what we need. If the Mets could sweep that doubleheader, that's the type of momentum we, we need. Obviously, if we lose both, we're 0-6, and we're headed toward uh, a, you know, a ridiculous losing streak to open the season, which I, you know, I'm not looking forward to. If we're 1-1, one one, we're 1-5. One so that's not great either, either. So the best case scenario, we build up a little momentum. We go 2-0 tomorrow. We put our best foot forward, and, and then we have a little positivity there. Then we'll have a show tomorrow night, and we'll talk about it. All right. Again, like, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, send any comments. Let me know your thoughts. I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone. We're all part of this channel, and we're all in this together. And as I say with the Mets, it can't get any worse, but probably will. Have a great night, day, um, enjoy.